Astralis, the once greatest roster in the world, is now at rock bottom. They have failed to qualify for CSGO's final major. So how exactly did this happen and what's next for them? Before we get into the video, I want to let you all know that we've partnered with Qualcomm Technologies and the team over at Snapdragon Elite Gaming to explore the world of mobile esports. Our latest Worth episode explores the story of Bobby and OG, two of the best Brawl Stars players in the world. But before they teamed up, they truly hated one another. They had to overcome their differences to prove that the greatest of enemies can become the perfect team. Check out the episode using the link below. Over the weekend, the qualifiers for the Blast Paris Major came to a close, and we now finally have the 24 teams that will be participating and CSGO's final hurrah. But it wouldn't be CS if there wasn't drama surrounding the entire RMR. There was Loba and Nico getting into a ridiculous argument on Twitter, and of course, NBK and Kenny S falling just short of being able to play at the final major at home. Oh, and of course, we had two of the best teams in the world who were just in the Pro League Grand Finals together, having to duke it out in a last chance qualifier for the final spot of CSGO's final major. Cloud9, this is do or die. Rain drops back behind the smoke, the rotation, and the flanks even coming in, but Rops, he shatters their hearts. Fizz are heading to Paris, and for Cloud9, they leave with absolutely nothing on the path to Paris other than misery. Now, although C9 didn't make it, and the prospect of FaZe even being in this situation is pretty wild, most of the conversations in the aftermath of the RMR surround Astralis. Despite a pretty lights out performance from their star opera device, Astralis failed to get the wins they needed and won't be attending Paris. Not only will this be their second absence from a major in a row, but they're going to be missing CSGO's final major, a piece of history. The result has sparked a ton of questions about what the roster should do, not only in the future, but right now. But to better understand the gravity of this entire situation, we have to go back to last October. Despite the devastating split, mental health breaks, and plenty of controversies, Device, Glaive, and Zipnix were finally reunited. They were still missing two of their core members, but they had their star opera back and a chance to finally turn things around. Unfortunately, things didn't go that way. Event after event, Astralis failed to post any noteworthy results, except it wasn't due to Device shaking off the rust like many people, including myself, predicted. In fact, Device was playing like he hadn't skipped a beat. What tricked it to them last round? It's gonna throw that smoke to funnel them out. Fully blind, Device Wait, is Device? there to cover him. Device with the Deagle spam goes away. Skinny cover to play behind, but still Device doing it. Not even an up needed. Device, four kills in, tagged, and cleared by Jabby, but he does his job. At the exact same time, it would have been kind of worth it, but this is starting to feel a bit awkward. That is one hell of a shot. Such a gap, Device. What? He's going to keep on going. Walks right into Bit and sends him to an early grave. Every tournament ended up being the same story. Device and Blame F would play their asses off, but it wouldn't be enough to carry the team to victory. And digging deeper than ever, Astralis again. Oh, again from Device, two in the round. This time, not oh. a big enough multi kill, and it's left onto Buzz. One v three, the last hope for Astralis. Liquid, the tides washing over them as they take this two and zero oh. team. Liquid. Knockout Astralis! And with the announcement of CS2 and the fact that Paris would be CSGO's last major, Astralis and Device had one last shot to prove they had what it took. But once again, despite Device playing his heart out, Astralis couldn't get it done. To make matters worse, they lost to NIP, which is not only Device's last team, but Config's new home after his contract was terminated with Astralis. He's been struggling to get up towards top rap and Config gonna be tested. He drops the bomb. This round starts to go by the wayside and as Glaive and Zip left all alone, the old guard of Astralis to keep their dreams alive. And NIP are two kills away from knocking them out. Make that just one. And it's Glaive, the IGL, who needs to lead from the front. Yeah, a legendary team, a legendary players, a legendary organization, but they will not even make challenges here at Paris, the final CSGO major. So Astralis, the four-time major winning team, won't be attending CSGO's final major. And to say that Device was devastated would be an understatement. I mean, after the loss, he pretty much just sat in his chair facing the wall for God knows how long. Devastation, I think you could say, for Astralis, who have been trying to reform and refine their form in the last couple of years, but it's it's very hard to reach the heights that once was. And I feel like it's especially disappointing for Device, who has put on an incredible tournament as an individual player. In the aftermath of the loss, there were a ton of reactions from the community. 
Of course, plenty of people pointed out Device's stellar performance, but a lot of people wanted to dig deeper. Pim pointed out that despite having a massive lead in opening kills, Astralis were still losing round after round, which potentially calls into question their ability to call mid-round. Analyst YNK had even more choice words for the Danish org, specifically calling out the fact that members of the Astralis coaching staff are cheaters. This is in reference to the fact that their coach Castle has a five major ban and was unable to coach the team. Hunden, their new analyst, was also unable to step in as coach because he notoriously has that exact same ban. As a result, Astralis' director of sports had to step in and coach the team, and, well, obviously that didn't go too well. Now, we could sit here all day and point fingers, but there are some real questions regarding the Ord's future that they need to answer, specifically regarding Device. Ever since rejoining the team, Device has been performing well above expectations, and with little to no support time and time again, I think it's fair to say that maybe he should find a new home. Sure, they can always rebuild the team around him and blame F, but that comes with its own complications. Unless Zip and Glaive voluntarily leave, how will Device feel playing on the team without them? More importantly, it's become clear that Astralis as an org is just completely lost. Every decision they make just seems questionable, and maybe it's best with that baggage for Device to just start fresh. The question on everyone's mind is, where would that be? Now, from the outside looking in, you might see a talented, handsome, absolutely cracked person like Device and think, man, as long as he speaks the language, this guy can go anywhere. And although that is somewhat true, it is more complicated than that. You see, Device is an opera, and as good as he is, operas are typically the star players of their respective teams, so that already eliminates a ton of top tier rosters. Next to that, unless Device personally takes a pay cut, Buddy's pretty f***ing expensive. So for Device to find his forever home, the team is not only going to need an opera, but have a metric shit ton of money. So hypothesizing on where he might go is a bit of a crapshoot. Now, although Astralis won't be attending the final major, CSGO isn't done yet. There are still plenty of other events for the team to participate in. And since they're already making changes to the lineup, it seems like Astralis is attempting to ride this shit out until the wheels fall off. Question is, will they be doing it with Device? And for the man himself, how do you keep your focus knowing that you won't be attending the final major of the game that you owe your life to? Ask me where he's going. A lot of people on Twitter, about 60% of them, seem convinced that it's going to be liquid. They don't believe in the OC supremacy, and it's possible. He speaks English, they all speak English. I love the cope, but I think it's way too early. Yeah, too early to cope that hard.